is Willie. Thanks again for watching another one of my beginner videos. Today we're going to take a look at the SEMA X8HC quadcopter. This is the latest version of the X8 series and I think you're going to like it. So as I normally say, let's just dive into the video. But before we do that, I want to give you a list of the things that I'll be talking about in this particular video. pretty simple basically we just have to put on the blades install the legs put the camera on and if necessary add the prop guards now although this is a toy grade quadcopter I still like to treat all my quads as if they're hobby grade so the first thing that I like to do is to balance the props now installing the blades is a little bit tricky so I want to go through that process with you the first thing you need to do is make sure that the arm and the blades match and if you're using um, blades from another company, just make sure that the leading edge also faces the arrow direction. I found installing the blades was a little bit tricky because of a plastic collar that uh, is involved. So let me just give you a little idea of how to put the blades on by removing that collar. No music, just video. After inserting a pin, twist the collar and you'll hear a tiny snap. Let's talk about the camera for a little bit. Although the uh, new quad has a very similar camera to the X8, there is a little bit of difference between the two. And basically what you'll find is that the newer camera has a much more cushy type of uh, base to it than the original X8. Installing the camera is pretty simple. Basically you want to slide it on the base of the quad locate the uh, camera plug, insert the plug and you're ready to go. But Make sure you look at the warning label too because it tells you what not to do. And also make sure that you have your uh, SD card in the camera so you can do your photography work. And here's a tip for those who want to use the prop guards. In order to install them you have to remove this little plate that's in front of the arms. In order to complete the preparation of the quad, add the battery to the back of it put the batteries into the transmitter and you're ready to go with your first flight for your X8HC quad. Before you made in flight, I do want to encourage you to become familiarized with the transmitter and its different features. So let's just take a close up look at what the unit has. Okay, one of the differences between the old X8 and the newer one is that the throttle on this particular model would go up and would stay in position. However, on the new version with the hover and camera, you now see that the throttle kind of pops up, it pops back into place. This is important in order for the quad to hover. Okay, there are two ways that you can initialize the quad. The first way is to take the throttle, push it all the way forward and all the way back. 
and you hear the beep beep. The second way that you can initialize a quad is to take both sticks and push them towards the inside corners and that will also initialize the quad. If you want to perform flips with the quad simply push the button on the top right and move the stick to any direction that you want the quad to flip. Okay one of the things you want to do in, in order to run the transmitter is to press the button once That gets you into normal mode. Press it again. That's the intermediate mode. And then to go to headless mode, press and hold the button. And you hear a continuous beep. To get out of headless mode, press the button and hold it again. And that puts you back into the uh, programming mode. One beep, normal. Headless mode. Out of headless mode. Now, in order to turn the quad off, and this is a warning that I want to give you because if you're in flight, if you take the throttle stick and push it all the way down for two to three seconds, that will actually turn the quad off. So if you're flying, make sure you do not hold the throttle stick down more than two to three seconds because this horizontal position that it pops into. That keeps the uh, blades turning on the quad. There's one serious discrepancy I found out about the transmitter and that is mode 1 versus mode 2. When you initially turn the transmitter on it defaults to mode 1 which is actually mode 2. So if you live in the United States this is the mode that you want to fly on. Now in order to change from mode 1 to mode 2 basically what you'll do is you will turn the transmitter off Take the right hand trim and move it towards the right and turn the transmitter back on and that will switch it back to mode 2. You'll also notice that we have an L here in the screen that stands for low rate mode. The final transmitter option that I want to show you is that there are trim buttons and these are typical of any remote control transmitter. Straight out of the box, the X8HC is ready to fly, but there are some modifications that needs to be done to it. In fact, take a look at my before and after. So let's take a look at some of the things that I did to make this quad look and fly better. flying quads, whether they be toy or hobby grade, is that if you're doing line of sight flying, it's very difficult to tell which way the quad is flying. So the first thing that I do is I make sure that I paint the front of the quad. Another trick that I use to help with line of sight flying is to have different color front legs or to paint them the same color as the front of the quad. One of the best modifications that I've discovered, whether I'm flying a toy quad or a hobby grade quad, is to use colored blades to determine orientation. Basically there are two layouts that you can use. One is to have the same color blades in the front and the back or as I prefer I like to have one color on the left side and one color on the right. Now I normally use orange on the right and green on the left but because I didn't have any blades and I borrowed some from a friend on this particular model I have blue and I have orange. The next modification is really easy and that is I always like to try to get more flight time by adding uh, a larger battery. But in order to do that, I had to switch out the connector plug inside the quad in order to fit the aftermarket batteries. Now because the aftermarket batteries are usually a little bit longer, you will have to make some adjustment to the battery compartment door. So what I did was remove it from the quad and cut out two little slots on the side so that the cable can protrude a little bit easier. And to lock down everything and to make sure that the batteries did not move during uh, flipping maneuvers, I devised this little device out of a hair wrap to keep everything snug and tight inside the battery compartment. One difficulty you're going to find when flying toy grade models is that the transmitter does not have a timer in order for you to time your flights. With this particular model though, we have the capability of adding a low voltage alarm. What I use is I use 3M tape, I tape it to the bottom of the alarm and attach it to the side of the quad. 
This will give you an alarm when the voltage reaches a certain point. I normally use 3.6. That gives me about a 80% uh, use of the battery. The final modification that I made is an option, but you might enjoy doing this, and that is to build a cradle for a run cam camera. Later on, I'll show you some footage from my run cam that was attached to the quad. And to wrap up the modification section, don't forget to put your ID label on your quad so you can get it back. Maintaining the altitude, so that's pretty good right there. Haven't changed the altitude, and it is steady going. 